Jutting out on the southern shore of Lake Victoria, Bismarck's rocks are a landmark for Mwanza, the second largest city in Tanzania. Beyond the bustling commercial centre, the roads deteriorate and other services diminish. Most communities have no electricity, but Zara Solar, a family business, is helping to lighten the dark. Tanzania has one of the lowest electrification rates in the world and many villages are just too far from the national grid to expect electrification in the near future. 90% of the rural areas doesn't have national grid electricity. So you, have, you find that 90% are in the dark. Zara Solar has seen the chance to use the sun to deliver electricity to remote areas. Over 30 million people still don't have electricity. And because of the way they are scattered, the communities in the rural areas, it is very expensive yeah, to provide the mains. So solar becomes the only option. We have sunshine throughout the year. Kerosene lanterns are most common in rural areas, but for poor families they are not only expensive, but a hazard to health and safety. <laughs> Kerosene lamps are smoky and bad for health. Also, small children may play and knock over the lamp, which is dangerous and can cause a fire. Solar light is excellent. There are no health problems. Also, if you buy solar, you get energy directly from nature. We don't have to pay electricity bills every day. Unreliable roads make it impossible for Zara to provide backup from Mwanza, so they use local technicians to install equipment properly. Solar technology is very simple, but there are very minute things that need to be taken care of. Now, a normal electrician will not be able to know those if he has not attended any solar calls. Yeah? So the result was that uh, many solar systems failed yeah, in different places. So people now had a negative attitude to us all say no this is not workable. Zara's technicians are sometimes called in to repair problems with faulty installations. I'll have to come back tomorrow to sort out this problem. We have a network of technicians who are scattered in almost all the districts in Mwanza region and now we have gone beyond to other regions also. In that way a customer who walks in here and buy anything he doesn't have to take my technician for the installation. So I just connect him with one of the technicians who is near to his place and the installation cost becomes lower. So anyone now who wants to buy a solar system, they will try first to contact him and then he refers them to me. So in that way, I scratch their back, yeah, they scratch mine. Yeah. <laughs> Above is the solar panel. The electricity travels down to the charge controller. From the charge controller, it goes to the battery. Afterwards, it returns to the charge controller and carries on to the lights. This system has an inverter for changing direct current 12 volts to 220 volts to charge a phone or using a television. Thanks to his brigade of trained effective technicians and quality equipment, Mohammed has made Zara a real success. When we started Zara Solar, the first month we did sales of around 200 US dollars. Now it's almost two years. We have almost reached 60,000 US dollars per month. My main concern here is to make profit. Initially when I started, I never realized that I'm doing something better for the community. But now after I see, it is also a source of income generating. It is making somebody be able to live. Before I had solar, I used a generator. The problem with the generator is that it would keep breaking down and many fish would die. For this business, solar is vital as it never cuts out. When I started my solar business, I never dreamed that one day somebody will recognize my work and appreciate and honor me for that. So being a finalist, whether I win or I don't win, yeah, it's something else. But just going to London and participating in this award ceremony, it's a big thing. I can say it's a lifetime achievement to me.